Hi, it's Bill Chapman once again with the Capital, Capital Update video, and uh, today we're very lucky to have uh, the man, John Shapiro. Uh, John is uh, a former YLS chair. Uh, he has uh, started uh, through the ladder of the CBA officers. Uh, he is presently the vice president, July 1. He will be the uh, president-elect of the uh, CBA. John, welcome. Thank you, Bill. Good morning. Now, John, where'd you, where'd you go to school? I don't mean grammar school, oh. but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did my undergraduate work at uh, Boston College and followed that up uh, here in Connecticut at the University of Connecticut School of Law. I did not. This is the first time I found out that you were a BC, that you were an Eagle. I am. Okay. The same, same as my brother and uh, his uh, oldest son is going off to Boston College in the fall. What happened to you? Uh, well, that's <laughs> another story, you know. But anyways, uh, you, you have a... Uh, what we call a, a small practice or a solo practice? What's the correct words? It's a small practice. I practice currently with my cousin, uh, Sarah Shapiro. Uh, we're based out of Middletown. Also have an office down in Stanford. Uh, my practice is uh, generally uh, commercial litigation. It's about 65% of my practice, and the rest is uh, a lot of general uh, corporate transactional work and what I dub uh, general counseling. Uh, my partner, my cousin, she does uh, a lot of... Uh, Real estate closings and divorce mediation and probate work. Okay, we so a lot of area between the two. Do, of us. Do, doesn't sound that small, uh, <laughs> but but anyhow, uh, you know, one of the things that John does now with the CBA is he's the chair of the Legislative Policy and Review Committee, and I think that anybody who's done anything with the legislation or has thought of anything with legislation, LPRC, uh, is is kind of like a, a magic acronym. And John chairs this. There are 12 members of the LPRC that represent various uh, ages, uh, geography, uh, diversity, uh, areas of practice. And uh, John has to bring all of these together as we uh, as we have our meetings on a on a somewhat regular basis. During the session, it's almost every week. There's a meeting. And then outside of the session, there's uh, periodic meetings because somebody needs to uh, renew authorization or uh, they, they want to get something uh, together for the Rules Committee. Um, so, this is, uh, you're finishing your first year as the chair of the LPRC. Thoughts? Uh, it's been an enlightening uh, experience, uh, and by that I mean in a, in a good way. Uh, you know, prior to this year I hadn't really been too actively involved in the L LPRC. I never sat on the committee. I was obviously well aware of what it did, and uh, obviously had positions uh, come through the various sections that I've been involved with. but. Uh, to actually see the CBA's, you know, process, you know, firsthand of what it takes to uh, have a position come through the CBA, uh, you know, it, get approvals hopefully uh, by the LPRC or, or sometimes not, uh, uh, and just see that process bear out. It, it's a very uh, eye-opening experience. Uh, I also think the the LPRC and the lobbying work that we do uh, within the Connecticut Bar is one of the most, uh, I feel. I don't want to say underutilized because I think it is very well utilized by the sections, but uh, perhaps underappreciated may be another word because I think it's an incredible benefit uh, to the uh, to our members and to the uh, to the bar in general of what the the LPRC and, and our and our lobbying efforts do for the organization in the state. Right, and you know we we get uh, questions uh, all of the time. You know, a section will have a meeting, a bill might come up, and somebody wants to. Uh, uh, decide what to uh, uh, to get a position. What is what is the process that they, they they contact? They make contact to the LPRC, and then what do we do? Well, the first contact I think they should have always make is to you, Bill. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean I, I think uh, you know the first thing they have to do is they have to do their job internally within the uh, within the committee. One thing that we do with the LPRC is every year at the start of the year. We do have a, a meeting to uh, educate the sections about what the LPRC process is. Um, every section uh, has a, a legislative liaison whose job it is uh, to vet bills. Um, and the best thing that we can do, and obviously the legislature is unpredictable in terms of when bills might come up and when they might get uh, uh, you know, set before for a hearing, uh, the best thing they can do for us is communicate when they see a bill that is coming up that they might want to have addressed uh, so we know what's on our radar and it's on your radar as well. Yeah, during the session, every day, uh, these uh, the, the chair and the legislative liaison of a uh, section 
receives the list of bills. Uh, they will also most likely get a follow-up saying, you know, did, did you realize that this bill is out there? And the responsibility of the legislative liaison is to, uh, to really identify bills. Uh, it shouldn't be like three months later uh, somebody says, hey, you know, whatever happened here, you know, with this particular bill, is it, you know, we didn't realize it was on the radar. And actually it's the legislative liaisons who are supposed to be looking at this. Then they bring it to the LPRC. They fill out a form. Yep. And uh, and then John chairs the uh, uh, specific meeting, which is usually 8:30 every Friday morning, and uh, you know you just uh, shove it out there for the rest of the committee to discuss, and they usually discuss. Yeah, and it, it's it's an active in, uh, committee, as you mentioned. It's a very diverse group in terms of uh, in all areas, geography, practice areas, uh, you know, every which way you'd want diversity, it's in there. Uh, but it, it's, it, I think that gives it a, a lot of different perspectives that are coming at that bill from the, uh, the members of the committee. Uh, a lot of good questions are asked and you know, we always invite the, uh, the members of the committee who are advocating uh, the position to, to present at the committee and answer any questions that our members may have for them. So the one important thing is to be prepared to answer those questions and to be clear on what your position is as well. Um, sometimes it is uh, a blanket opposition to a, a bill. Sometimes it's you're okay with the bill, but you may want some amendments uh, or changes to the language of the bill, and that's something that uh, we are able to do, you know, through Bill's efforts and uh, uh, others' efforts uh, to work with the legislature on making a bill, while it may not be what we want initially, making it what we want, uh, so it serves our members the best uh, in the best possible ways. Or if it's something we don't want, making sure it doesn't uh, come to fruition. And what we do is we communicate with. Uh once the authorization request comes in, it's communicated with every single section. So again, it's the legislative liaison and the chair. They see what the request is, and it's their responsibility to, uh, to bring this out to their section if they think that it affects the section. And you know, they, they come back and they, uh, they communicate with us uh, regarding any support or uh, opposition to a bill. And because that, that's not unusual too, to have uh, sections having different opi opinions on a bill, and it's important that that liaison uh, sees what's going on and pays attention to it so nothing is missing. We don't have a last minute, oh God, this section is about to support this bill and we're really opposed to it, but uh, because of our process you need, it's, it's not one individual that makes that can make the case, we need the sections to make the case and that takes you know, a certain commitment from uh, the members of that section to advance a position. Yeah, and that's generally only a 48-hour turnover because of the uh, the speed or, you know, sometimes it turns into being how slow things are at the legislature. Um, but it, it's, it's important that you have the right legislative liaison uh, for your section to be able to, uh, to get things moving. And just because, is, am I right, just because uh, a section brings something to the LPRC, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be approved. No, it's it's not. The, nothing is a sure thing. Uh, and there, remember, there's two levels. The LPRC is just the first level of approval. Uh, once it gets past there, uh, depending on where we are in terms of our, our calendar, it either has to go through the executive committee uh, or the House of Delegates. And uh, even when the LPRC approves something uh, beyond the uh, you know beyond the section level, it doesn't guarantee that the House of Delegates is going to approve that position either. Right. And we have had things where it's been uh, it's been approved by the Executive Committee or the Board of Governors, and then it comes to the House of Delegates and they say, sorry, we, you know, we, we can't buy this. You know, it, 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 it stops here. There's no more, no more lobbying on this bill. So, uh, but anyways, that's, you know, it's the LPRC and it's not something that a member can kind of uh, beg to get on. Uh, there's a, a particular inside process, I guess, uh, in terms of people who get onto the LPRC and, uh, you know, for, for a three-year term. So anyways, John, I think we've taken uh, sufficient time. If there's any questions uh, about the LPRC, they can hit you, they can hit me, and uh, hopefully uh, you pass on this, uh, this video. Thank you, Bill. Okay, thank you very much, and until the next time for Capital Update.